All right, time now for our Wall Street Week daily segment. The host of Wall Street Week, David Weston, joining us right now. And David, we were speaking yesterday, as we do uh, almost every day now, pretty much, and you had a great interview uh, with the former uh, head of IBM, Sam Palmasano. Right. And as we were concluding that interview, you had to scurry off because yeah. you had another exclusive interview yeah. uh, with uh, three folks here. Tell yeah, we us did about a roundtable yeah. with Larry Summers, yeah. the former Treasury Secretary, as well as Dan Trill, the former governor mm -hmm. of the Federal Reserve, and of course our very own Stephanie Flanders of Bloomberg Economics. And we sat down to talk about what happened with the banks? Where did it go wrong? And one of the things we talked about with them was the, the Federal Reserve's decision this week and what Jay Powell had to say at his news conference and whether he said the right things to calm the situation down. This is part of what we heard. Arguably the most difficult decision since he's been there, although I actually think market expectations helped him. They, they had sort of converged around 25 basis points, and so then it became a communication issue. Um, I mean, what I was struck by, David, in on the monetary policy side of what he said yesterday was that he, he, he said quite explicitly, it's too soon to tell how monetary policy should respond to the anticipated credit tightening. But I actually think their actions yesterday were a fairly significant response. I mean, everybody, three or four weeks ago, people were anticipating a 50 basis point increase. We got 25. Three or four weeks ago, we thought we might see the SEP suggest uh, a, a ceiling of 5.75 or 6 percent interest, and now we're back to exactly where they were in December, uh, last December, when they did the last SEP. Uh, and of course, they changed the language on the, uh, the what what the forward guidance type language. Instead of ongoing increases, we're back to may have some firming, and of course, some people are reading that as the end or close to the end of the of the uh, tightening cycle. So I actually thought that um, they were conveying uh, more of a, an assessment of the impact than Chair Powell suggested in his remarks yesterday. So, Larry, what about you? Uh, in the past, you've suggested perhaps they might have to have a terminal rate as high as 6 percent. Do you agree with Dan that what we saw from Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve this week was a monetary policy reaction to what we've seen already? And if so, was it appropriate? I think what they did was uh, broadly appropriate. It was a time for temporizing because there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of cards are going to be turned over in uh, the next uh, several months. And the question then was, does temporizing mean stopping all rate increases? And I think if they had done that, it would have sent actually a signal that they were very highly alarmed and would have been a mistake. Whether to continue precisely on the path uh, that they were on before these banking concerns arose, I think that would have seemed almost oblivious to what was a potentially gathering storm. And so I think, as Dan suggests, that a middle ground uh, path was right. And it was particularly right if the policy is going to be signaling in a clear way that uh, even if your bank fails, you're going to be a depositor as well. And so nobody in America needs to have the kind of sweaty palms weekend that a large number of people had worrying about whether they were going to meet their payroll because of Silicon Valley Bank. And I think in the context of providing those kinds of assurances um, that the monetary policy path they set was appropriate. And appropriate doesn't mean that it will turn out to be right. Appropriate means that the errors are kind of two-sided, that there's a chance that they'll need to tighten more than they're currently projecting. And there's also a chance that not all the tightening they're currently projecting uh, will be necessary. I think if authorities are sufficiently aggressive about adding confidence to the system. My guess, best guess is that the Fed's judgment in the SEP will turn out to be considerably more accurate than the market's assessment that the Fed is going to be pushed into rate cuts uh, very soon. But that's a, uh, a judgment 
that one can't have any great amount of uh, confidence in. But yes, I think what they did was broadly appropriate, particularly if we can be sending reasonably strong signals of confidence in the system. So, Stefan, let me ask you about what we saw from the Federal Reserve this week and in a larger context, what it indicates, if anything, about central banks in general and how they're reacting to this situation. Look, I think it showed, you know, we've had a lot of debate about whether there's a conflict between uh, trying to bring down inf inflation uh, as effectively as possible and how to res and responding to this uh, situation in the banking system. And, and Larry's, Larry's said it well, but I think it also, we've had sort of central banks explicitly say, the ECB saying, we have a different set of tools available. Uh, we had a bit of that um, from the Fed this week, but I think, you know, Propping up confidence in the stock market is in conflict with bringing down inflation in an orderly and as effective way as possible. But trying to resolve these questions of confidence, especially if we do see the kind of policies that uh, Larry and Dan have been discussing down the road, um, I think is perfectly consistent. What I would worry about is that uncertainty is going to continue. The uncertainty about how these higher interest rates feed through onto bank balance sheets and the broader economy is going to still be there in six months' time. And you are going to have those potentially, those discontinuities that Larry was talking about earlier, which the Fed is not necessarily going to be able to gauge. So, yes, it was the right decision. And it makes the point that there doesn't have to be a conflict between these two things, but it probably still narrows the path yet again to an effective approach.